Welcome back to the MSAG COVID-19 timeline, covering the handling of the pandemic. In our last video, we broadly covered the different ways that the UK has handled the COVID-19 pandemic, and explored how and when they were implemented, from January to the end of September 2020. In this video, we will cover the UK's handling of the pandemic from October of 2020 until January of 2021. Then, we'll have a look at how other countries in Europe handled this pandemic in comparison. Let's get started by examining the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths from October to December of 2020. This is a graph showing the daily number of positive COVID-19 test results between the 1st of October 2020 and the 31st of December 2020. On the 1st of October, there were 13,188 reported positive COVID-19 cases. The daily number of cases rose throughout October and November to a peak of 31,503 cases in one day. From mid-November to early December, there was a fall in the number of daily COVID-19 cases reported. However, there was a dramatic increase in the number of daily COVID-19 cases in December. On the 1st of December, there were 16,458 cases reported. On the 31st of December, there were 52,464 cases reported. The highest number of cases reported in one day in this period was 81,355 cases reported on the 29th of December. To clarify, in our video Handling the Pandemic Part 1, we mentioned that the highest number of cases was in January at 68,053. This is using the scale of cases by date reported, which is the date that people reported having symptoms. Here, we are using and referring to cases by specimen date, which is the date that the specimens were taken. This is a graph showing the daily number of deaths within 28 days of a positive COVID-19 test result. This graph shows data between the 1st of October and the 31st of December 2020. The number of deaths on the 1st of October was 66, and the daily death rate rose steeply in October to 320 deaths on the 1st of November. The daily death rate then followed a more gradual increase in November and December. There were 401 deaths on December 1st, rising to 709 deaths per day by the end of the year on December 31st. Now let's combine these graphs and look at how the UK government responded to the COVID-19 pandemic in this period. Pause the video and jot down what you know about the UK government's response to COVID between October and December of 2020. Let's run through a timeline of events in this period. On October 14th, COVID-19 tier regulations came into force. This replaced the existing local lockdown restrictions. Liverpool became the first region under a Tier 3, which ordered the closure of pubs. Households were also banned from mixing with each other in parts of the northeast of England and Manchester. On October 21st, Wales entered a three-week firebreak lockdown. This was a strict lockdown and people were banned from meeting people from other households, indoors and outdoors. On October 31st, the second national lockdown was announced, from the 5th of November to the 2nd of December. Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced that England would enter a four-week national lockdown on the 5th of November, where pubs, restaurants, leisure centers, and non-essential shops would close. Unlike in March, schools, colleges, and universities would remain open. On November 2nd, the five-tier system came into force in Scotland to help curb the spread of COVID-19. On the 23rd of November, trials showed that the COVID-19 vaccine developed by Oxford AstraZeneca was 70% effective, which could be as high as 90% by tweaking the dose. On December 2nd, the BioNTech and Pfizer vaccine was approved by the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, the MHRA, making the UK the first country in the world to approve a COVID-19 vaccination. On December 8th, immunization campaigns began. 90-year-old Margaret Keenan became the first individual to receive the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, the first administration of a COVID-19 vaccine outside of a clinical trial. On December 19th, a new Tier 4 measure was announced by the UK government and was applied to London, Kent, Essex, Bedfordshire, and Hertfordshire. This was to try and control the new variant of COVID-19. The new variant was becoming more prevalent and it appeared to be more contagious than the previous variants. Under the new Tier 4 restrictions, people were not permitted to interact with others from outside their own household. On December 20th, countries around the world were introducing bans on travel from the UK in response to this new variant. 
more than 40 countries banned arrivals from the UK. Finally, on December 30th, the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine was approved for use in the UK. This was exciting news, as this will hopefully lead to a rapid increase in the speed of the vaccination program. On the same day, more people entered into the highest Tier 4 restrictions across England. The final time period we'll examine is January 2021. As this was recorded in January of 2021, there is very limited information available. On January 1st, there were 31,820 positive COVID-19 test results. On January 2nd, there were 60,373 positive COVID-19 test results. Deaths have also tragically increased in January 2021. On January 1st, there were 671 deaths reported. On the 7th of January, the UK government reported 799 daily deaths within 28 days of a positive COVID-19 test. But how did the UK government respond to the COVID-19 pandemic in the first few days? Since this is more fresh in your mind, pause the video and jot down what you know about their response to COVID-19 at the beginning of 2021. As we just learned, the number of daily cases and deaths in the UK is rapidly increasing in early January. However, there was some good news as well. On the 4th of January, 82-year-old Brian Pinker became the first person to receive the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, as the UK vaccination program expanded to include it. On January 5th, the Prime Minister announced that England would enter a third lockdown, with similar restrictions to the first lockdown in March 2020. These restrictions are expected to last until mid-February. Now, let's take a look at how the UK compared to a few other European countries in terms of the number of daily positive cases as well as daily deaths. We'll use data from the Financial Times to compare the United Kingdom, France, Italy, Germany, and the Netherlands. This graph is looking at new confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the United Kingdom, France, Italy, Germany, and the Netherlands. Specifically, it is looking at the 7-day rolling average of new cases per 100,000 people in each country from the 25th of January 2020 until the 5th of January 2021. Italy was the first European country to see a surge in COVID-19 cases, with a peak in mid-March 2020. The other European countries in this graph experienced a peak slightly later on in April 2020. All the countries shown saw a decrease in COVID-19 cases throughout May, June, and July. Cases in all countries started to increase in September, to a peak between early and mid-November 2020. France saw the highest peak in November. All countries saw a decline in cases in the last half of November and early December. You can see that in December 2020 and January 2021, the United Kingdom had the sharpest increase in cases out of all the European countries shown. The rate in the UK rose from an average of 22.1 cases per 100,000 on December 2nd to an average of 86.4 cases per 100,000 on the 6th of January 2021. Why has the UK had such a dramatic increase in this period? If you have any ideas, pause the video and jot some down. If this question is posed to you at an interview, there are lots of things that you could consider in your answer including the potential effect that mixing over the Christmas holidays could have had. The UK government allowed some of the population to form a Christmas bubble, which meant that you could visit another person's house on the 25th of December. However, a recent paper in the Lancet Medical Journal tells us that the likely culprit for this dramatic increase in COVID-19 cases in the UK is the new variant of COVID-19, which is thought to be more easily transmissible. That about covers the facts and brings us up to speed on the current status of the pandemic and how the UK has handled it so far. In our next video, we'll comprehensively explore the different opinions on the way this pandemic has been handled, both positive and critical. We hope this series has been helpful so far and look forward to seeing you in our next lesson.